how are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm great. I'm so happy to to talk to you again. To oh, see you me again. Too. Me too. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, I I've been thinking a lot because um this project uh was supposed I was supposed to have 31 meaningful conversations about topics that really matter to me. And this is the lesson number 22. And, and then I, I think, I mean, I think I have approached, can I say approached? Approached mm -hmm. yeah. pretty much everything, but, but no, but actually, so I was thinking the, the past days I was thinking, okay, so what is, what it is, what is it important? that I want to talk to Pat Patricia about. Mm -hmm. And I've been, I've been contemplating that. And just five minutes ago, I, I clicked. I was like, okay, so that, that is important, very important. So impermanence, you know? Impermanence, yeah, that's yes. good. Yeah, yeah. Something, sorry to interrupt you, but something I wanted to say, um, you've been contemplating that is the perfect word and back when you said can i use the word approached um so i would say i was thinking that i've covered everything like you've you've done all of the important topics so you would a better word choice would be i've covered everything thank you patricia so, thank you're you. welcome you're welcome yeah, I've oh, impermanence. yeah yes yes Yes, so I was I was getting ready for that lesson like five minutes ago. Mm -hmm. So this topic of impermanence, wow, it's been something very important, and and at the same time, I'm not very good at dealing with the impermanence of life in general. Uh, I I do understand the concept, but I I don't know. I think for for good or for bad i i sort of get used to things and for me when they change of course that when they change for the better it's good but actually what happens to me i i i would like to listen about your experience with with life i think impermanence covers life in general mm -hmm. But what happens, what happens to me is that whenever I'm happy, satisfied, I think things will stay that way forever. They will never change. But also on the other way around, when things are terrible, I cannot believe, like, I, do, I, I, I don't think they will, ever, they will ever change. And they do. And I mean, things are always changing. And I think that life it's full of it's it's like a book with chapters phases and but it's it's hard for me to let go you know it's hard for me so whenever a chapter it's coming to an end i get attached to things to happiness happiness happen happiness or suffering i get attached and for me that that's my biggest cha challenge in life actually it's dealing with impermanence i'd say i and, and it's where all suffering comes from all suffering comes from yeah all suffering comes from yeah because if you not if you cannot accept the impermanence of things and things are impermanent everything is impermanent I mean, you are going to suffer a lot if you think that things should be the way they are forever. Like, how do you, how do you think, how, how do you feel about it, about impermanence? Yeah, um, so I want to go back to clarify one thing that you said, because mm -hmm. I find it very interesting. You said that no matter your situation, you get attached to it, whether it's happiness or suffering. So when you're in a happy situation, but it's coming to an end, you get attached to that and maybe you don't want it to end. But is it, is that what you said? Like you also, if you're in a, like a crappy situation, 
um, like a bad situation where you're suffering and you're going through a lot of stressful things, mm -hmm. you also attach to that as well? Well, when you say attach, do you mean like, like willing, willingly, I enjoy sort of, I want to well, be there. <laughs> like Maybe, I, I, I guess that's why I'm asking you that. Um, so when I think of attachment, it's like you kind of are hanging on to this and, and resisting the change that you know is coming a little bit or resisting moving out of it and moving forward even though you know that maybe if it's not a great situation, you know that if you roll with the changes and go forward, there might be happier days ahead. Yeah. I think it's not, I don't know how to describe it. So whenever something bad happens, I, deep inside, I know, I know it, that I'll be okay no matter what, that mm -hmm. it will pass. I have that understanding because looking back, I know that I have had dark days and they are all gone. So I do have this understanding that it will pass. But when I'm in the middle of it, uh, it is... Oh, I get what you're saying. When you're in the middle of it, it's hard to remember that. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I, I am so hopeless. I am, I don't know. I usually, I don't, I, I don't think that's a good thing. I'm, I'm the type of person. I'm, I'm not sure how to describe this, but I, I go through its extremes. I, or either, can I say either? I'm extremely excited, happy, happy, or I'm devastated. I, I, I'm not, can I say centered? Like I'm absolutely, I'm, I'm always, that makes perfect sense. You're like at one extreme or the other, like you're yeah. super happy or you're super devastated and you have a hard time just maintaining that centered sense of balance. Is that what you mean? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Except yeah. when I'm meditating daily, if I make <gasps> meditation a, a daily practice, like, I know I'm supposed to, but I'm not always doing what I'm supposed to. So Yes, yeah. And that's, yeah. Um, that's a great thing to recognize. You did the Vipassana course, right? Yeah. So that's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of the main lesson of Vipassana meditation. And like that big word, equanimity, like not equanimity is like, you know, in, in many meditative practices, that's the ideal to try to reach or strive for, like not feeling overly happy or joyful or overly devastated and sad, which is so difficult. It's really hard for me to do too. Really? Yeah. 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 So an interesting thing I was, I was talking to, I, I have met incredible teachers with this project and one of those was Ella. So I was having a conversation with Ella and she's a meditation teacher, meditated, how do you say? Meditation teacher. She she's teaches a, meditation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's a meditation teacher. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was going through a very, um, uh, something bad happened in the beginning of this week and then I was so sad and then I was talking to her so, how sad I was and how embarrassed at the same time I was because I've been doing some spiritual practice like forever and I'm still reacting so negatively so like a normal person like I have this friend who keeps telling me wow why, why are you doing all these practices if, if you're like that crazy. He, he didn't say crazy, but if you are that reactive and all that, I, and, then I'm, and then I'm like, okay, imagine if I was not doing all of these practices, how I, would, <laughs> how I was going to be, right? Yeah. So I was so embarrassed. 
like, can I say embarrassed of me or at me? Embarrassed of me, or at myself, of um, myself? I was feeling embarrassed only. Yeah, you could just simply say, I was so embarrassed or I was feeling really yeah. embarrassed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, and then she said, it was, it was a lesson that I'll, I'll take for life because she said that we should um, go back a little bit. So, for example, she said, picture something good that you have in your life right now. Three, she said, pick three good things that you have. And if you go back, you will realize that in order for you to have that good thing, something bad happened in the chain of events. Wow. And, yeah, and then and then hmm. she, she she asked me to like pick one and then I picked like this apartment that is that it is my safe place and I would never thought I would never dream of like being able to afford like having a life of my own like and then what br what brought me here was something bad that when it happened I was so devastated but that made me come to this point so everything that you have in your life that is good maybe not in how can i say in the first chain of events but if you mm -hmm. go back you will see that far something, enough mm -hmm. far enough there yeah. is something bad that happened in order for you to have something good and so so that is a good way of looking at things like so if something bad happens now i'm not sure that's not this, the, the final that's not the end yet so that happened. So what am I going to do with that? So it is bad. Okay. But like in the past, bad things happened. And now they brought me to this very moment. And I am happy now. Maybe that bad thing lead me to the next good thing, you know? And then I was like, okay, so there is nothing bad actually or good. It is interpretation maybe. <laughs> Equanimity. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Equanimity. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. And that's a beautiful um, little technique to use when you're just not feeling great about things. Yeah. 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 yeah but it is, for me, I think the hardest thing is when people walk out of my life. I think the impermanence of relationships they are the hardest for me to understand and, and to, can I say, to come in terms with? Come to terms with. Mm -hmm. Come to terms with, like when, yeah. when people, I mean, when they pass, pass away or when some misunderstanding happen, happen and they can, can't stay in my life, for me, or when we become two different and even though there is love we need to i don't know follow separate ways go to separate ways go our separate ways go yeah our separate ways. for me that type of impermanence it's the hardest like to understand that people are in my life now but soon they might not be that's the thing for me money and objects and I don't know that that is okay I know that I'm going to lose like my favorite it happened in the past I I, I love this one but I know that one day my cat will break it <laughs> it's okay I'll yeah. be sad but it's okay mm -hmm. yeah it's just a thing but <laughs> with people and even animals it's yeah, um, animals. it's so sad yeah animals. yeah animals. I agree I think that's probably hard for a lot of people to realize that um, people aren't going to be in our lives forever. No. <laughs> and for some people, it's really difficult to, to come to terms with the fact that we aren't going to be here in this world that we know forever. Yeah. 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 So do you, do you have like, any not technique but something that you apply to this impermanence rule that we have going on there is one thing there is one thought that i have that helps 
a little bit with that. Mm. Um, I don't remember if it was something I read or something that someone like one of my teachers told me, but the idea is that when people come into our lives, they're there for a reason and we're in their lives for a reason. And maybe it's because we need to teach them something or they need to teach us something, or maybe it's a mutual teaching thing. And then when that need has been fulfilled, it, it might, we might go our separate ways. Uh, we might slowly lose touch because the need is not there anymore. Um, have you ever heard of soul contracts? Yeah. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of that. Yeah. Um, there is something else with, there is soul contracts and something bad contracts. Do you know what it is? Something bad contracts. I no, don't, but it is not something yeah. bad. It is another word I don't know. because you have um, soul contracts that I think it's what you said that people, mm -hmm. they, they, Re reunite so they get together for a purpose to teach or mm -hmm. to learn or both yeah. and it's twin twin fire i don't know fire twin twin flames twin flames a twin flame twin it is flames. a contract as well it's uh, it's similar but yes it could be bad it's like <laughs> this is this is harder for me to grasp because I don't I don't know as much about twin flames. Mm. But what I have read about twin flames is that um it's like you're almost magnets to each other. Like you have to be together. And it could be a positive thing, but it could also be very toxic. Yeah. But for some reason you're drawn together and it could just end up a mess and then you have to deal with that either way <laughs> I don't know as much about that um yeah but another thing that I just thought of was karma mm. um and this is something that I've been learning about I took a yoga course earlier this summer and we talked a little bit about karma so I learned a little more about karma and it's just um, possibly from past lives, this is your karma. And then some people that are in your life may have been with you in a past life in another form. And your karma has just kept you together and you're connected for a long time over lifetimes. But then, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's karma that we are where we are and Karma can also be used to describe why we suffer and why we have easy times as well. And also when you think about like people who you perceive to be good people, but then bad things happen to them, you know, that could just be seeds that were planted in, in past lives that are just finally coming to fruition, that are finally growing. Mm -hmm. So I always think about relationships as like, oh, it's our karma that brought us together and I'm just going to appreciate it while, while it's here. <laughs> mm -hmm. But for you, when it is time to say goodbye, it is easier, would you say, mm -hmm. because you have that deep understanding? It helps. I mean... It helps, but it doesn't make it easy mm -hmm. necessarily because I think about the people who are in my life now, um, like my daughter, for example, and yeah. there's going to be a day when we are not together anymore. Like, you know, there's going to be a day when I die or she dies. And just thinking of that is, uh, is a really sad, sad I thought. I know, I know, yeah. I know. So I, I understand um, your thoughts about impermanence. <laughs> it's really sad. Yeah, I know, I know. But maybe mm. 
I think part of the problem for me is to overthink because I do that a lot. Even though I meditate, I'm, I was not supposed to be anxious about the future or um, ruminate. Can I say that? The past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was not supposed to do that, but I do. So I think if we learn how to live the day without thinking, oh, maybe tomorrow this won't be here anymore. Mm -hmm. I could I could enjoy more, I think. When I do that, I I usually happier. I am usually happier. Yeah. But yeah, it is it is when I overthink. It is when I think when I because I, I think we are not supposed to be like what I'm doing usually it is I'm having like the great time and like in the back of my mind I'm like oh this is so great I wish I could stay this way forever <laughs> but I should not be there I should just be <laughs> like leaving the moment I I remember that there were times where when I was not doing that that I even I I I, I like taking pictures but I think my happiest moments I didn't remember of taking my cell phone to take a selfie or a picture. Those moments, I were living them fully and not thinking like, let me, let me register this in my mind. Let me like, let me have like material evidence that this mm -hmm. happened one day. Like trying to capture the moment. Capture the moment. Yeah. It, yeah. That's so great. Let me, let me, I remember that there was a time in my life where I wanted to be a writer. So mm -hmm. whatever, I still want to be a writer. Uh, yeah. It's, it's weird to say that out loud. I want to be a writer. Uh, but there was a time when I was narrating in my, in my mind, everything that everyone was doing. So I remember... <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yes. So that girl, she's now uh, getting up, getting up, standing up. She was sitting, sitting. Yeah, getting up, standing she's, up. She's getting up and she's getting in line. She's ordering a coffee. Now she takes her coffee. She adds sugar. I was, I was like, I was doing that because I wanted to remember. I have this obsession with remembering, remembering because I think the, the, the worst thing that could ever happen to me is forgetting, like forgetting things, forgetting situations, forgetting how I felt. So I was like trying to do this narrative. So mm -hmm. I would go home and then I would write about the day. I always kept journals, always keep writing about everything. So I remember that, but th those times they were insane because I was, I was narrating strangers actions, like everything, the bus and the, subway i was i don't know because i it's really interesting <laughs> i think it's really interesting because i love to i love to sit and people watch i love people watching i could sit like at a cafe or yeah. in the airport yeah, me too. Me just too. anywhere all day and just watch observe yeah. people yeah but you're like putting it into words in your mind yeah and then you're trying to remember it later that's yeah i might I might try that just for a little yeah. while <laughs> with napkins because sometimes it could be too oh. much. So sometimes I'll say to a waiter, can you, can you lend me, can I borrow a, a pen? And, and then I would take a napkin and then I would make notes mm -hmm. about, about strangers. Yes. So, Ooh. so impermanence. Yeah. Mm. Impermanence. Uh, it is a topic that I wanted to talk to you about because it, it bothers me that things are ending so fast. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Like this lesson. <laughs> like this lesson, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, but right now in this moment, um, it's an enjoyable moment. I'm yes. having a great time in this moment. It's been lovely having this conversation to you, with you. Um, yeah, and I mean, I, I don't know what the future will, will bring, but it would be great to have another conversation with you. Lovely. And I'm going to think about impermanence. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm about to meet one of my good friends and 
you've inspired me to have a conversation with her about impermanence. So oh, wow. let me know later yeah. how, it, so how it goes. I will. I'll get back to you and um, maybe share some of her thoughts. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I'll be happy to know. And thank you, Patricia. Yeah. It's so lovely. It's always so lovely seeing you and talking to you. Thank you thank so you. much. I'm going to, I just, ha I don't have many notes, but I have a few notes that I'll send you um, okay. later. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Camilla. And I wish you uh, a great nine more lessons <laughs> to complete. No, one more. <laughs> on the project yes uh, yes 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 i thought it were, you meant my portuguese lessons for the day sorry oh yeah. no, 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 no 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 nine more you have yeah. nine more for this project oh that, yes that is number 22 so nine yes you're good at nice and i'm gonna have to i haven't visited your youtube channel in a while so i'm gonna have to yeah. go check it out yeah, yeah. Thank so you, interesting Patricia. thank you all right well i hope you have uh, a good evening thank you you too all right we'll talk soon Perfect. okay bye Ciao.